Hello, everyone. Welcome to week 36 of the It Doesn't Matter podcast. And we've got myself, John, and we've got... Bobby Platano. There he is. And we've got... I am the notorious one. I am down. Boom. Lots of things happening once again in the world of professional wrestling. Most featuring the Tuesday night fight between... NXT, NXT, NXT versus AEW, 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 AEW. Ooh, you hear that? That's only 609,000 viewers. What? <laughs> While NXT had 921,000 of them things. They brought the big guns, the major guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the major guns. How you doing? How you doing? Oh, boy. Well, do you, well, let's start off with this. Dom, did, did you watch either one of those shows? I caught a couple clips. <laughs> I was out and about rendezvousing. I but, was too. Oh, my God. <laughs> but I did, I did see. Well, the first thing I did, I did put it on USA, and I seen <laughs> Mr. John Cena. Yo, that place went nuts when he came out. Well, how nuts can a little studio in Orlando, yeah. Florida Sound be? good. It sound like because it's a sound stage. There you go. Sound sound like, just like center stage. It sound good. <laughs> it was good quality. I mean, like a hundred, two hundred. Yeah. Whatever. The sound just reverberates off the wall. Whatever. But then I flipped on the other channel, and then I seen that Ray Phoenix. He was in the ring, but there was no John Moxley. No, no. He was ruled out. Whatever's going on with him, the concussion still. So they brought back Orange Cassidy. Mm-hmm. So I'm sitting there I'm thinking, hmm, what should I watch? I went back to John Cena. Then we'll see what he had to go say. That's what I did. And yeah. I, I did that. And I switched back. <laughs> I felt like I was a little kid again, switching back and forth, see what was going on. But AEW lost me. They had a chance when uh, Tony Storm was going to get ready to – to show her segment, and then they went picture in picture. That's what you call it. Yeah. And they just, they ruined the segment. You know, that probably to boost up the ratings even more, and I just went to the NXT side. What is her promo again, Dom? How does uh, Tony Storm do her? Chin name? up, tits out, and look at the shoes. Hey, watch. Brand new t-shirt coming soon. <laughs> now, she does have a new t-shirt with the chin up and the Tits out. <laughs> Tits out. Tits out. But she doesn't have the part with, watch out for the shoe. Which she only did that, she did that a few times in the beginning, and she only said that phrase once, and then now she's kind of put it away. Um, it's all about the chin and the tits. <laughs> and the ass. Sets. Sounds like Chinese names. Well. Anyway, uh, Tony Storm. <laughs> Tony Storm a couple segments on uh, Dynamite there, the Tuesday Night Dynamite. <laughs> And I can say that I did not watch NXT, but I did catch all of Dynamite, so that's where my loyalty lay. Uh, Abel, you were able to see some clips of some of the action from Tuesday night. What are your general thoughts on the Tuesday night fight? Uh, I just feel like NXT, they they brought out all the legends, but for what? What are you trying to prove that, okay, you can boost the ratings for one night, but what are you going to do after the fact? Uh, what are you... Who are you building? Like, yes, Braun got that moment with, with Taker, and well-deserved. He's, he's been busting his ass. He's been the big dog down there. But what's going to happen when all those guys don't show up next week? Are the viewerships going to be at 900? Nope. It's going to drop down to back to 6 or 7. Next this week is, is Halloween Havoc. Ah, pay-per-view. Part 1. No, not the pay-per-view. Well, you know. Premium. <laughs> premium. Streaming event. Stream. No, it's on TV, uh, USA. What's premium, the, premium cable event. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> PCE, it's that good stuff. You watch Becky go against. Who's she going against? <laughs> uh, See, t- uh, Tiffany See? Oh, the, no, no, isn't the other Irish girl? Other uh, uh, I, I Gigi Dolan. No, uh, oh, uh, some chick they're hyping up yesterday. All the fire. It was a good promo. I thought I thought Becky Lynch was hurt. See, that's how I haven't followed Raw or NXT. So when did she like got her arm busted open? She mm. was supposed to fight um, Tegan Knox, but they, they let Tegan, her go, right? Tegan beat that ass. Mm. Or no, Becky beat that ass the other day, right? On um, sure. Raw. On Raw. Yeah. I think Is they it? cut that out of the Hulu version. Ooh. <laughs> you know, they cut out the, the nonsensical BS stuff on Hulu. Terrible. Anyways, it was cool seeing John Cena down there. 
even my, my man Carmelo Hayes, he tweeted out, I'll make sure you, we take care of you in the parking lot. Because a lot of incidents <laughs> take care <laughs> take place in the parking lot. It really that, is. That's pretty cool. Every time something happens in freaking NXT, it's always in the parking lot. I still want to know who attacked Hideo Itami. <sighs> the injury bug. Maybe it was uh, Solo? CJ Parker. Oh, jeez. Juice Robinson. Well, that's going to be a different topic. Yeah, no. <laughs> I saw that. That was not a good fucking... Send off for... No. Kenta. Yeah. Oh. Not for Juicy either. Don't do that. All right, but to end the show for NXT, you had the badass Braun Breaker, who I actually like, maybe because he's a Steiner. Who? 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 He's got that dog in him. He got that dog That's in him. That's a weird phrase, man. Yeah. Yeah. He got that dog in I'd him. be embarrassed to wear a t-shirt where, with that fro- phrase and logo. You wear it. I wear it. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> I've worn it. Anyways, and then the American badass showed up. The Kid Rock version. Yeah, requires less makeup. <laughs> yeah, he came out there on the bike. Man, that was a monstrous choke slam. Did they what the, what, did he come out to one of the songs? Kid or? Rock. The Kid Rock did come out to I one of the songs. I am an American, American badass. badass. I was like, whoa, hold on. They spend a little money now. They say, yeah, well, he drove down on his motorcycle, what, 10 feet? <laughs> he <went> around. <laughs> you know? Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, Kid Rock is a WWE Hall of Famer, ain't he? Hall of Famer. Yeah. yeah. He is. And he also hates uh, my cousins, the trans. And he also hates Bud Light. So, that's Kid so, Rock. Yeah. But I still like your music, so whatever, man. You know what they say? Ball with the ball. Bang the bang. I do not know what's going on. Right <laughs> you don't know the song? No. No? Nah? Wow. I, I, you know, I, you know, back in the day, I, I borrowed that actual CD from my friend Brian Buckholtz. Um, I borrowed it from him twice. Uh, man, what those? What, what times were those, man? I had to physically borrow the CD from my high school classmate. Did you burn it? Two times. I ain't got no computer for that. Oh, shit. Not at that time. Not yet, man. Might have to explain oh, what burning shit. means. Because nowadays... <laughs> <laughs> burning <laughs> means... What does burning a CD mean I remember, now? <laughs> I remember specifically going to Staples, right across the street from Mikasa, the house, not the restaurant. New London, yeah. Connecticut. That's right, and I bought a CD burner with all these specifications on a computer that I didn't know what the specifications were. I just bought it anyway. Yep. So the very first bunch of CDs that I burned, which is to take a blank CD... A and- CD-R. Blank Don't CD-R. Don't get confused with a CD-RW. Put it, in your, put it in your computer... And you have these music files on your computer, and you drag them over to a program, and you burn them. You press record on something, and it actually a laser, a laser, a laser burns lasers. data onto a compact disc, which you can then listen to music from. And a bunch of those first CDs I made, they all had the little skips. You listen to a song like "Oh, what the." <laughs> 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 I remember that. <laughs> you all know what I'm talking about. There, I had so. all the G Unit mixtapes. You too? All of them oh, joints. That was a shit. Then man. I got the CDRWs, the rewritables. I used to download Bum Fights. <laughs> <laughs> used to watch that too. That was pretty cool. I can't. I think everybody watched that shit. That was the funniest and, thing and ever. Like backyard fighting and the Kimbo Slice back in the day. Yo. Taking it back. Woo. Kimbo was that beast. That was that dog right there back in the day. Woo. Hey, man, you ever get porn on a floppy disk? All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> True story. hey Let's stay on NXT right quick, because, guys, bag, so I want to know. Hard. All right. Hard. <laughs> disk. <laughs> Bluetooth. We need a sponsor, man. Woo. Speaking Bluetooth. of that. Shout out to the Rhode Island Broadcasting Network. <laughs> thanks for sharing our show, and thanks for letting us be on your network. I actually checked out one of the shows the other night. Checked out one of the, the hockey shows, and uh, uh, just shout out to uh, Bergeron, Patrice. Patrice Bergeron on ah, the Hockey yes. Network. So. Is that the black dude? No. I have no idea. That's the dude on the Pirates, right? Or Penguins? He was on Pittsburgh? the Bruins you know, at one point. <laughs> so I got, I got two comments I from the... Match, uh, so I should remember. <laughs> the announcer. I, I just remember that from a long time Boston radio show I used to listen to. And they're just making W-E-E-I. Fun of <laughs> <laughs> you, which used to be W-A-A-F. <laughs> NBC. NBC. <laughs> Private parts on USA. Check it out. 
<laughs> Man, that movie has come out twice on this podcast. <laughs> Just like the Bushwhackers. Oh, you had to ruin time. it. Oh, That's God. the only Hasbro action figure hanging on the shelves, the Bushwhackers. Oh, jeez. Anywho. All right, let's stay on NXT right quick. Yeah. Guys, I want to know, what do you guys think about Alexis King? Who? No, I'm just kidding. Is that the name of Alexa Bliss's child? No. Alexis King Alexis? Is how about a Toyota? Son. Alexis King. How about a Nissan? No, Alexis. Couldn't afford the car, so I bought a Lexus. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alexis or just Lexus King? Lexus. I think, is it Lexus or a Lexus King? Lexus. Ah. I don't know. Either way, it's Brian Pillman Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Pillman Jr. What do you think about his new name? Uh, that we don't know. Well, it came up with a cockamamie, cockamamie scheme to come up with that name. It's kind of like when uh, uh, Joe Henning became... Curtis Axel, he's like, I'm gonna take my dad's name, sort of, and my grandpappy's name, Larry the Axe. Yeah, it was such bullshit. Right, so it, 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 it is basically like it the, is Lexus King. Okay, right, so Lexus they basically King. try to do like <laughs> with Curtis Axel, they try to do like The Rock with Rocky Maivia. Right, that was right. Terrible. Right. But, you know what's terrible? Did you see the vignette last night? For Lexus King? Yeah. No. Oh my god. I hope there were cheetahs and tigers involved. No. Yeah, on his shirt. What? No, like he had a Bengal tiger. He had the worst edge up of all time. Take a shot. He, he had. <laughs> <laughs> you, you said it. Yeah, you said it. Yeah, the worst edge up of all time. I'm gonna take a shot. Ew. He had like a fake beard, and it looked like his teeth were just fake beard rotted. Rot- <laughs> Look at this Lexus shit. King. Look at his edge up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew him. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, like he wants to. He said he was never a junior because he only known his dad for what, like four years old or some shit. Like he's that, disowning so. his poppy. Yeah, whatever. Mm, I think that's W trying to get the. You don't you don't want to put the junior. Yeah, junior on you or. Hey, spe- you know I don't like juniors either. Okay. Basically, I- basically he said Vince Junior. Twenty six years ago, my father was buried, and tonight I bury his last name. Ouch. I will no longer be the, known as the lost son living in his father's shadow. Ooh. I will forge my own path and stop at nothing till I am the king of NXT. Well, we'll see. Sure. I mean, hey, well, you know why, why, don't you, why don't we bring on David Benoit too? Huh? Who? Yeah, David Benoit, the guy he, who can't get a shot. He could become, you know, Rick Crosby <laughs> in NXT. All right. Oh, Jesus. He could be uh, Tiger Rick's Mask. Rick's Crosby. That's... He needs some edge. Ah. Oh. But hey, anyway, the the former Brian Pillman Jr. Hey, hopefully he gets a good chance in NXT. I mean, I, I liked him when he was in AEW. He was Me a good too. athlete and he had a good presence. So maybe uh, hopefully Triple H, Paul Levesque, can, or Shawn Michaels rather, can see something in uh, this young lion. I yeah, I, th- I think the promos that's what's that's going to be the one thing that's hurting him right now. But ring wise, he's he's there. He's not bad, but he's not great. It eventually, with more reps in NXT, you'll you'll get to where you need to be. So, well, is well, he gonna be a top name? Yeah, he's gonna, he'll be a top name. He's a good dude. I, I have good faith in him. Yeah. so he'll be around. When we met him, he was a good dude. So I, yeah. you know, I hope well, if he want to get out that Pillman uh, limelight, I bet not see no cross body blocks. I bet not see no sunset flips. You better change the whole game, young man. So he can't do no high flying moves Just either. Don't That's be true. like your daddy. If you That's don't want to be like your daddy. You can, yeah, you Switch can't, up. You, yeah, you can't. Wrestle like Rick Rude. Ooh. Or, or Chris Benoit. No. <laughs> Be or, rabid. He should wrestle like The Undertaker or any dead man. Or uh, <laughs> Owen Hart. <laughs> wrestle like Sean. No one ever did no. like that That double, that, what do you call that, that kick Owen Hart did. The, uh, it was a girl. flying move. Not, not the, the Inziguri. Oh, the uh, flying wheel kick. Yeah, that. Like, I love that. No one ever did it like Owen Hart, no. man. Seriously, no one ever did it like Bre- like like Owen Hart. No one took a turnbuckle like Bret Hart. Yeah, you know. And well, yeah. Why don't you steal from the Hart Foundation? Your dad was in the Hart Foundation. So steal all from all all the <laughs> all them guys there. That's Bret. Hey, which move can I steal that you won't get mad about? Sharpshooter. Uh, the elbow in from Montreal. the middle rope. <laughs> what up, Mach? Ooh yeah. You want to answer one of these? Uh, one of Randy's questions. Randy what got a lot of questions up there. Randall, Randy, what do you Randy got? Oh, sucker. Hold on. Holy We got shit. a couple Jesus. of questions from our loyal fan, Randy. And one of his uh, questions is, what are your worst <laughs> wrestling shirts 
of all time. A worst? What? Yeah. So I will say something that one of us has owned as oh. a worst wrestling shirt. Not the one of all time, just for us personally. Big show. <laughs> you have a big show? You, you had a big show I had shirt? I had a big show with that bear. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> the w- the Kodiak. Yeah. The Kodiak. yeah, you remember that I, I had the same one. <laughs> oh, man. I'm what like. What a bunch of geeks. What the hell was I thinking? Ugh. I can tell you one of my one of my worst shirts. I mean, it's it's uh, when Jacqueline went into the WWE Hall of Fame. Ooh. It's one of her Hall of Fame shirts. I got it on clearance for like seven dollars, and I just thought it'd be hilarious just to buy one of a piece of merchandise. You didn't get for the Miss Jacqueline chocolate ones. It's it's a silhouette of her in her red outfit and but no face. And she has a hat. <laughs> yeah, no face. That's, Yo, yeah. That's how Yo. I like it. That's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, if I saw that, I'd fucking lose it. Just give me them chocolate melons. And Randy, my worst t-shirt, I don't have any. If they were terrible, I wouldn't buy it. <laughs> fucking liar. Boom. What's your worst one that you have right now? You guys, maybe one you bought that you don't even like anymore. You're like, yeah. you regret that decision. The one with Abel's face on it. <laughs> Wait, Abel? <laughs> Abel? Just, yeah. I didn't buy that one. <laughs> <laughs> Abel's face. What? Uh, uh, he's mad. Let me, see, let me see. He's not in the center. I let me am. See. Uh, <laughs> who created this death row t-shirt? Well. Actually, I think the worst shirt I ever had was... Uh, <laughs> we hungry. <laughs> nah. That was um, a good one. That's a good one. He wears that all the time for sure. Seth Rollins. Oh. I don't wear that shit anymore. You can't see me. <laughs> you had that one? I had that one. Wow. <laughs> you can't see me. <laughs> That's why he broke John Cena's nose. The night too soon. Wow. <laughs> me. That's terrible. You can't see me. Another, another rando Randy question. Randall. War Games match or a Hell in a Cell match? Ooh. Well, War Games, I mean, if I had to go back and watch any War Games, it'd be with those early War Games yes. with Dusty Rhodes, Magnum TA, the Horsemen involved. Versus, you know, a Hell in a Cell match where mostly there were singles matches. I mean, I like singles matches, you know, more in a way. But if I had to go back right now and watch one of them, I'd probably watch one of the classic War Games matches. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that. Just the way Hell in a Cell has been lately is just, it's not the same. It, it's not, it just seems like it's just, just because it's a pay-per-view, you have to have it. Make it like a real blood feud that leads up to it. So that way it's worth my while. War Games, poof. It's the same thing. I know it's a, it's a pay-per-view that NXT has every year, but something about it is just, just so special. It's, we haven't seen that in so long, and they finally brought it back. It, now just I'm like with Hell you. Cell. Yeah, no. With, no. All right. No. With more, more gimmicks. More gimmicks, yeah. I mean, you, speaking of a random Hell in a Cell pairing, it was Jeff Hardy and Randy Orton in a Hell in a Cell just because Jeff Hardy wanted to be in a Hell in a Cell. That was during the pandemic? It was a little, I think it was a little after. A little before? Know, around that time, the limited audience. I felt like I was in the hell in a cell when I seen Jeff Hardy perform on stage in Dallas. Oh, you're an asshole. And then you're he messed up the words in his concert. Okay. They, he would start playing the whole song over again. I felt, oh man, that shit was so terrible. Well, it's not your type of music, bro. <laughs> no, he kept fucking up the song. Maybe he was like Lemmy singing Triple H's theme at Mania and just forgot all the damn words. Time to play the game. All right, so hold on. You ain't my thing. Hell and Cell for me. I like it because that's how you end a feud. And I'm going to say one feud. And you go, oh, shit, that was a good one. I didn't think about that. The Usos in the New Day. Ah. That was a good-ass match. That, that was a good one. That was a good-ass match. That was the last time they feuded that, that crazy for a long time. I believe so. I mean, they had uh, Xavier Woods, I think, probably yeah, you know, tied up. And they were just... Right, you know they're uh, Kendo sticking him to death. Well, especially the way Biggie's now, I I don't think we'll ever get to see Biggie ever again. Unfortunately, I mean we'll see him in ten years because they all come back. Isn't that right, Adam yeah. Copeland? Yeah, you know. You know. Um, I would like to see him back in the ring. He he did entertain me. He was. Oh yeah. He was all all, all WWE and like what they wanted, but. Damn, man. I mean, you know, this happened to me the other day at my personal training facility where. You know, the guy said, you remind me of Big E. So the first thoughts in my mind were, oh! <laughs> People at home! <laughs> Don't you dare! Be sour! I can't do it because Mitch Silver can do it. I can't do it. But uh, the first thought I thought when he said Big E was Big E the wrestler, the WWE champion. The second thought was 
Big E, the Eastern State Exposition in uh, <laughs> up north in Connecticut. The, th- the last person I thought of was Christopher Wallace, right? Wallace? Big E, yep. Yep. Cr- no. Yeah. Christopher Wallace. Yeah. yeah. Christopher Wallace, Big E Smalls. That's the last person I thought wow. of. Wow, he called you Big E Smalls. Yeah, because I... notorious B-L-G. That's, yeah. like, that's a compliment. He, he sent yeah. me a clip. He, he was like, he played it for me, this guy. His name is Stacy. His name is Stacy. Stacy? That's right. He was like... He played... He's like, the way you said, good evening. So he found some clip of Big E... Smalls saying, "Yeah, his nose is congested. Good evening. Yeah, I was like, you I know it's off the. I know what album. Yeah, you want to put cotton balls about. in my mouth? Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> life after death. Hey, but good evening. Oh, sky's the limit. Good evening, everyone. But Randy, it's gonna be a Randy topic show. When does MJ, When does MJF lose the world title? Oh Jesus! We're not no, 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 no. We're, that one, that can wait. That we, one, we ain't talking pass. about that, Randy. Pass. No more." MJF questions. If you if you hold ask on, the top on. five like, question like, again, I'm gonna. Come I do find like you. that one. I got, nothing, no, I got nothing to do. With Seth Rollins or Kenny? Oh, They're just God. random questions. Rand, random questions. Randy. I do like that question though. Better wrestler Seth Rollins or Kenny Omega? But to we'll be, save that. To be fair, he day. asked these about 15 minutes ago. But his most recent question is favorite wrestling video game, and uh, mm. <laughs> none of them. The free one. You know what my favorite one is? The free one I got. <laughs> WWE 2K23. I got a free code because I had to do an impression of The Undertaker at SoFi Stadium, and I got a free code for the game. You serious? All right, well, let's hear that impression. Oh, he just well, wanted, let's see that impression. He just wanted me to go. <laughs> but the Notorious, the other Notorious in Waterbury, Mitch Silver. He had to do an impression of Bianca Belair. The whole fucking thing. <laughs> the whip. The dance. I got it on my phone. We're what here? Please. Please post that on our on our page. The big man. Big man. The big man. You know what? I know he doesn't Time listen. Stamp. He don't listen to this show. Oh, shit. And you know what? That's why I'll play track. it. All right. Moving on. All right. Guys. Yo. Let's take a shot. What? I don't have. Let's take, ball. A, let's take a shot. Oh my goodness! Because I want to talk about the straight edge wrestler who might be making his return to Chicago at Survivor oh, Series. Sorry, brother, but that doesn't work for me. Here you go, Phil. I said Edge. Damn it! Take a shot. Who? Whip. Oh, Edge. Straight Edge. Oh yeah. <sighs> All right, it's been a lot of chatter. That, but no cheese. No cheese. Hold the cheese. It's been a lot of chatter that Phil CM Punk Brooks has been talking with WWE mm-hmm. to make his return. Well, They're doing everything to keep it on the hush. Do you guys see Phil back in the WWE? Never, They've been making a lot of references. Never say never. Triple H has said it many a times. Never say never. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, but the WWE has been throwing a lot of references, a lot of references to the best in the world, you know, references to this past Monday Night on Raw, where the king of strong style, hit which means GTS. he's the master of all styles, yes. is that he hit a go to sleep to no crowd reaction on Monday Night Raw. Uh, but come on, that's not even his moveset. He's no. never done never. that. Never. No. You know? So no. what does that mean, you know? And we we observed recently that I've been listening to some of Corey Gray's commentary. Co- and Corey Michael Gray's Cole commentary. too. Mike, yeah, Michael Cole. He's uh, now that he doesn't have someone in his ear. Say it, damn it! Say it! Say it! Say it like this! God damn! God! Oh! Now I know why Linda All left right. him. <laughs> How about this? Cody Rose calling Jay Uso the best in the world. One of the best in the world. Oh. Seth, oh hell no! Seth nah. Rollins saying he's the best in the world. Okay. Ooh. Michael Cole use it using puppet terminology. Ah. Corey Gray is saying the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist and riding on a wave of a lightning bolt. Guess Phil, who Phil said, said that, that one? And guess who said that too? M J F. A X on the wall in the Judgment Day's locker room. An X. And Nakamura. You know what X means? You know. When CM Punk did that, sober. 
When he did that in collision, he's like, This is my symbol. And he just spray painted an X on that. Yeah. His AEW title. I'm like, that everyone uses that symbol. You... Cyclops uses that symbol. <laughs> Morph uses that symbol. When I used to draw comics in the fifth grade, everyone had an X on their belt, man. Yeah, yeah I was the same way. I was same the same Malcolm. Yes. My brother. Enzo! <laughs> He was robbed at the Oscar in 1992, yes, brother. Was. Get out of my pocket! Hold my pocket, bitch. <laughs> that was one of my things back in high school. He was like, hold, hold my pocket. That was from Scared Straight. <laughs> you were Scared Straight? I've seen that. <laughs> on MTV? you never one, seen that, though? One of them shits you seen on MTV, finally? Yeah, when kids I acting up, send them straight to... I really didn't watch away. MTV. Oh. I watch Bet. You know, <laughs> you know so, so hold on. You're well, an ass. We're, we're at Dom's. I'm at Dom's house, and you know, he's watching BET. He's like, and we watch some shows on. And he asked me, he says, Don't you ever seen? I'm like, You never seen this show? And I said to Dom, I'm sorry, man. I don't watch BET. I'm not black. <laughs> I don't know if you at home can tell from this angle my shiny forehead. I'm not black. <laughs> That don't mean I can't watch BET. <laughs> I ain't Quan Trung. He can watch BET. I'm John Lee. <laughs> I don't watch BET. So you gonna watch the Miss Pat show? That's a good show. I will watch the Wayans Brothers on repeat. That show is hilarious. Yeah, they're hilarious. It's one of the best shows of all time. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Uh, I go to Pop's Diner. Fucking <laughs> John. Pop, sugar pops. Pop, 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 sugar pops. Fucking John. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, leave it to us. All right, the yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. We're all over the place tonight. The fucking Braves <laughs> lost tonight. Oh, Randy asks top five BET shows of all time. <laughs> College Hill. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? MTV. I mean BET. <laughs> Rap City <in> the Basement. <laughs> that was oh, that was Lord. Dope. So, so CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is CM Punk coming back? I mean, I observed on Observer Radio that they uh, said that there's negative feelings on bringing CM Punk. So, I mean, whether you can believe that or not, who the, knows? It could be a lie. Is that from Uncle Dave? Fuck Tell Uncle me Dave. a lie. I um, I but, uh, it could be smoke and mirrors. They're only smoking mirrors did you, did you see that one where, like, Cody Rhodes, every theme song he has has whoa? whoa. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. See, I see all this on TikTok, and you watching on Facebook, see? You know why? Because I'm, I'm of a certain age set, so I watch my TikToks on Instagram like a person of my age should. How old are you? It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter how old yeah. you are. It was all righty then. Woo-hoo. All right, guys. I got one more thing. It was a report that the Velveteen Dream was at the NXT performance. Center. Well, that was all debunked because he, even he said, eh, eh, I have not been in there. They have no contact with me. I will not be there. Well, he should have said, eh, eh, I ain't sent that message to that little boy. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> he should have told the judge, Dream out. out. Yeah. <laughs> Ow! Have mercy. Man, I, Velveteen yo, Dream. Talk baby. about. Characters for coming out of NXT. Oh well, <laughs> Patrick, Patrick Clark, Patrick Clark. Dream nah, over, baby. That dude I mean, was charismatic. I, out of you know what? I had a big prediction one year. I forget which WrestleMania it was. I think it was the one New Orleans. The New Orleans one. Oh. I predicted wrongfully. I was wrong. I predicted that that year everyone would be cosplaying as Velveteen Dream because the last time we were in New Orleans. Uh, for thirty, everyone cosplayed as Bray Wyatt. Oh yeah. You know? So I, but no one uh, wanted to cosplay as Ow, Velveteen Dream. Well, you could do it this year for a Halloween episode. Maybe I should get my inspiration from a channel I don't watch, which might be B T. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we go all dress as somebody for Halloween. We should do it. Not down. I said, we, I said we'd be the Dudleys. Oh, I mean, we got the glasses down. I'll be big dick, does <laughs> I know you're going to be big dick. <laughs> the quintessential stud muffin. No, you should be Gertner. Mm-hmm. I see with the neck brace. You should I be. like to titillate. <laughs> you like tits. I can't be bully. I'm too nice. She's got 
Big arthritis. And I'm definitely not small enough to be Spike. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the runt? Randy can be Spike. Because <laughs> he's the runt of the litter. The runt. How about the dicks? <laughs> All he oh needs some baby oil. The dicks. <laughs> So they had the dicks on like Raw, and they they had something else on SmackDown. You know, they had like competing midget wrestling dudes. No. The dicks and the... what was the fat dude with the baby oil? Oh, um, uh, fuck, big one Johnson? of the writers. Yeah, one big of the writers. Yeah, big, big Dick Johnson. Big yeah, Dick what Johnson. the hell's his yeah, name? Yeah. Uh, fuck. Jeez. His name was Randy. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, anyway, oh, well, Scott Lord. something, right? But CM Punk. <laughs> Ah, uh, he ain't coming back. But it could be a red herring, if you yeah. will. And he might just show up and surprise the hell out of everyone. At the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Take that, DraftKings. Thank you. Do, 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 do. That that would... Pfft, the place <laughs> would... If it has a roof... <laughs> well, I don't think Bomb. Tampa is that hot it, for it, it has Punk. a roof, you know what's sad? The Royal Rumble will sell out more than a temporary Rays game. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> it will, though, sadly. Grave digger and raw. Wow. Well, what can you do when you're on vacation? You don't need to be inside. Enjoy the sun. You know, if I go, if I yeah. if I go to Tampa, there's one restaurant that I found phenomenal, like AJ Styles, and it was called Columbia. Mm. It was in Tampa somewhere, and it was delicious. They had this fish dish that was incredible. Which is French. I trust you with the fish. Sandwich. Why don't you go to Columbia and get some fresh fish? It was delicious. And I told my boss that my old boss that even moved down Tyler there. G? I was like, if we if I meet you down there, we're going to one restaurant. And that's Columbia. Wherever the hell that one location is. Because I don't remember. <laughs> it's where they made the Seagars downtown. The Seagars. Seagars. Yeah, so I want to say it's Ebor City, but that's then it would be called Ebor City. This is just Tampa, so... Some bitch make me want to get some cigars. We'll save for a so big right episode. Here. Why am I saying triple? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. What does Terramana mean in Samoan? It means I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, someone called me a monkey today. Oh shit. Oh jeez. No. <laughs> I don't no. know. He was calling no. me a monkey. <laughs> or he was calling himself a monkey. You know the evil monkey for Family Guy, like you. You. And then Chris walks by and says, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> Get us back on track. <laughs> what? Work stuff, man. What the fuck? <laughs> Work stuff. We lost Randy like minutes ago. That's that Tia All right. Before we get into Halloween Havoc 1993. Top we got five Halloween Havocs. <laughs> no. <laughs> we got a couple birthdays today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Ricochet. Yeah, baby. Where have you been at, Ricochet? Is that why Samantha... He took that knee. Is that why Samantha wasn't at Raw the other She wasn't there? Nope. Uh, I'm about to go down is what Samantha Irvin will say. Say, you can't see me. Oh. (laughs) Wow. Abel heard that via satellite. We got another birthday. The human suplex machine. Hook's daddy. Taz. I like Taz. I am Taz. Beat me if you can. Survive if I let you. You're from fierce. Brooklyn, where I'm from. Red, Red Hook I'm section. I'm not from the Hooks, though. Red Hook section of Brooklyn. New I'm York. from East New York. You know, I you know I met Taz. That's my, one of my favorite stories, you know. Meeting Taz. Slam anniversary, 2013. Uh-oh. So, you know, every time you meet a wrestler, I met a lot of pro wrestlers. I even have a Facebook photo album called Messler, Wrestlers. Messlers. <laughs> That I've met or gret. It's rhymed on purpose. And Taz. So here I'm going to meet Taz, right? I was like, you know, I know what to say to this guy. I know what to say to Peter Siragusa. I, I went up to him <laughs> and I said, hey, man. Um, you know, when you used to do commentary on SmackDown, you used to say, pop the hips. You know, you got to do the super, you got to pop the hips. I'm like, I don't know what that means, Taz. And Taz was like, well, you know, you know, you know, pop your hips, you got to you know, throw your hips, kind of, you know, like, you know, like in the bedroom, you got to pop your hips, you know, with your wife or something, you know, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, I don't know what you're saying, man, but I'll take it. Sign my autograph, please. Peter Sriracha. They, on your autograph, did he put pop the hips? 
<laughs> that have been dope. No, oh. no. <laughs> but at the same event, the same event, Austin Aries, I met Austin Aries, and I was like, hey, and Austin, so Austin Aries and Bobby Roode were a tag team at the time. And they were miserable. I'm like, they were heels, right? But they looked absolutely miserable to be at this fan fest. Was but that anyway, prior to the beer money or was that after, 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 after Boston beer money? Boston Slammiversary. It was like 2011, oh. right? This oh, yeah, was 2013. So, yeah, 2013. Okay. So, so, yeah, beer money was already gone. Yeah. So I meet Austin Aries, and I was like, hey, man, you think you can write your, your tagline, the greatest man that ever lived, A-double Austin Aries? That's a lot to write, by the way. <laughs> and uh, he was like, you know what? I'll do you one better. And he wrote the le- the initials for the greatest man that ever lived. A, a, you know. I was like, you suck. I don't like you guys. <laughs> Did you pay for it? No, no, no. It was, it was a lot of wrestlers I met that day. And so my group photo is just me, you know, with Austin Aries and Bobby Roode. And they're like not smiling. Neither am I. <laughs> I was like. <laughs> the greatest picture of all time. You should have been like. Yeah, fuck, uh, fuck you, Austin Aries. <laughs> All right. And the vegan fucking... boat you rode in on. All right. Wait, now you're not the interview now. Our next <laughs> birthday that we have, John want to pop the hips with her mommy, oh. Rhea Ripley. Oh, oh, that's a hall pass. I already spoke with it with the, the missus. Rhea bloody Ripley. And that's exactly what she's going to look like when I'm done with her. What are you going to do there? I don't know. Give blood at the Red Cross. <laughs> what the fuck? Rhea Ripley, happy birthday. Oh. Rhea Ripley, the most over woman in WWE in 2023. Oh. Good job. I don't judge you. You don't judge her. We judge Mint the day. Happy birthday. <laughs> Our next birthday, the Usos' daddy, Ooh. Rikishi. Man, that guy is fat. <laughs> P-H-A-T. Pretty hot and tempting, if you ask me. And there was a picture, you might have seen it online, where he went, he shaved his head, he shaved his face, he looked unrecognizable. That wasn't him, that was his brother. Oh, cool, thank God, because he looked terrible. <laughs> Rikishi's brother, Daikishi. Man, you look like, you look like my big toe. Okay? But Rikishi yourself. You're a good guy. I met you. I paid to meet you. Not at a slammiversary. Oh, okay? And, you know, I said, my mom loves you. My mom likes you because you put your big ass in people's faces. She liked that about you. And I said, you know what? Don't sign this autograph to me. Sign it to my mom. And he's like, what's your mom's name? I was like, it's Hong. H. U O N G, and he signed it, and he said, "Here you go, from Mama Huang." <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! But I got the picture with Rikishi, and it was a fun photo oh. for me and Mama Huang. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Rikishi. All when right. you come to New London, Connecticut, Neon Chicken, <laughs> woo! Do I got a meal for you? They got chicken. They got chicken. They got ribs. They got cornbread. Collard greens. Woo! They got collard greens. But they aren't <laughs> special that day. They had avocado. No, some other green bullshit. They had pistachio cornbread. That's pretty Woo! good. I had that shit. That, 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 shit. that shit is more banging than the counter chick that gave it to me. <laughs> Woo! Well, oldest ride. Longest, Longest line. line. <laughs> Space Mountain. Vauxhall Street. Come on down, baby. New London, Connecticut. <laughs> All right, I got one more birthday. Oh, and if you God. don't want to hang out with me, there's a great store across the street. It's called Fur Lington. It's Chinese. Ladies, 18 to 25, leave your husbands and your boyfriends at home. Woo! Woo! And this segment brought oh, to you by Terramana <laughs> Tequila. It's the most electrifying tequila in all of entertainment. <laughs> Woo! Small batch. Biggest line. <laughs> Small package. <laughs> I'm Mr. Small Package. 
a and big delivery. <laughs> yeah, because I've been saving up for years. Blah! For our audio listeners. What oh the my fuck? god. We're going to cut all this out. Yes, they. <laughs> That'll be for the bloopers. We got one more birthday. I don't know where the hell this is. We got six about. views. No. <laughs> anyway, oh, who's our next final birthday here? The American Dream, Dusty Rose, baby. Listen, Holy baby. Shucks. It's my birthday. Say hello to the American Dream, Dusty Rose, baby. I'm so fucked up, but I'm not. <laughs> you know, you talk about your TikTok, talk about your Instagrams. Austin 360. No. Uh, but you see some of those. Dusty Rhodes uh, memes, you know. Baby, I'm in my prom. I'm 55. I'm in my prom, baby. I don't care if you're 22. I'm the man I can dream. That's the Rhodes. Oh, anyway. oh man. Dusty Rhodes, happy birthday. I hope you're <coughs> rolling over in your big tub of butter. And I, you know what? I can't believe it. It's not butter. But happy birthday, Dusty Rhodes. Oh, you know, you know, one of the things... All right, let's ask about his legacy, okay? So... Randy! Dusty Rhodes has said, you know, he does not want to be around for being the polka dot guy. No. But everyone pays tribute to him by being... The by polka wearing polka dot. dots. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that just going against what he said? Yeah. That's just wrong. Why would you do that? Because they don't pay attention to history. If you're a fan, like, you know, you know like Sasha Banks, Mercedes yes. Manet... You know, she, really she claims to be a big fan of Eddie Guerrero, and on one interview, allegedly, you know, they asked her like, "Like, do you know what like? I don't know what it was. Something like, you know, man, what do you know what the three amigos are?" And she's like, "I don't know." It's like that's his like finishing move. You don't know your favorite wrestler's finishing move. You know, it's not his finishing move. Something like that. It's like a signature. You know, and <clears throat> they asked her that, and she didn't know it. And it's kind of like, I mean, sometimes you put on the spot and you don't know things, but that's all right. But, uh, you know, hey. Why is Cody's big announcement was another Dusty Rose classic coming soon. So, so that was the announcement. It was an announcement. I told you. Holy oh, yeah. smokes. That's yeah. lame. You know, who are you going to put in the uh, tactic? You know, you know what? You know, it's going to be a big deal. It'll be a big deal if the Revival come back. Oh, my God. And win the Dusty Rose tag team classic. Well, they're not going to because they have a four-year deal and they're <laughs> not going anywhere. Be nice. It will be a... O P. Oh man! Didn't they win it before? No. Yes. They did. They you know, did. Right, but how, the return of A O P. Would you rather be... see more of the uh, authors of pain, or would you rather see more of the gates of agony? A O P. Yeah, give nah, me A O P. So, P. Man, Just they... because we haven't had enough, well, we haven't seen enough of them to to really get like a full. The gate, the what is it? The gates of agony. <laughs> yeah. I know, I know, but it's just like, hey, the authors of pain, they're just a brutal big man tag team. It's kind of like, cool, that's what the Viking Raiders are for. The Viking Raiders, they sell too much. They, yeah. AOP is more of that modern day LOD where they're not selling as much, but they're yeah. being the fuck out of you. But then, well, you said, well, AEW needs to sell. Sell, sell, sell. I know. And you know who's doing the damn thing right now? Who? Ivar. Yes. Hey, you know, I, I heard that was a really good match a couple weeks ago on Raw. Him and uh, Kobe that, Kingston. I I sought out that match and it so was a Ivar fun match. Is... Ivar doing the damn thing. Hanson. Hanson. Okay. Yep. I, I can. I still remember them as Hanson and Rose. Yes. yes. What are we talking about? I don't know. Ivar. Yes. <laughs> See, we ain't had no pre-match pork chops today. You know why? <laughs> I eat a lot of pork. Pork. I love porkity pork, pork, pork. Even at work, they know that because I've said it at so many times. Like, you know, if you don't eat pork, I don't trust you, man. I agree. You know, why? Because it's delicious. If I had bad English, but I don't. I have good English. Not the wood cleaner. <laughs> Someone I might know. <laughs> Wood cleaner. Anyway, what's going on here? <laughs> Dusty oh. Rhodes. Dusty. What's going on? Ricochet. Mommy. Mommy. Uh, who was the other one? Dusty. Kishi. Taz. Happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday. All right. 5 a.m., baby. Let's do it. All right. So we about to get into the main topic of the week. The John. main event. John, get your graphics ready. Holla. <laughs> We, Come on, we on player. 
Halloween Havoc 1993. Yes, the main topic of the evening. I love it. All right. You guys ready? Here we, here we go. All right. Yeah. So Halloween Havoc starts off with a video package. You see some kids walking to a haunted house where Tony Schiavone opens the door. The kid asks, aren't you supposed to be at the pay-per-view, Mr. Schiavone? He said, I have a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And the kid said, what's that smell? He said, <laughs> my wife is baking cookies. I said, damn, Tony got lowest jokes already? Yep. <laughs> No, his he wife said, was my, cooking. He said, "My, my wife is." Yeah, my wife is baking, baking cookies. cookies. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he said. He had lowest jokes already. After that, Tony took his mask off, and he was a werewolf or whatever the fuck he was. Exactly. It's that cheesy '90s, late '80s. They always got to do that cinematic shit. That wasn't even cinematic. That was bullshit. Ain't that his kids? Or one of his kids? It might have been. <laughs> now. This opening montage video for Halloween Havoc 1993 WCW has to be seen to be believed. It's Tony Schiavone, Tony Schiavone, like you've never seen him before. And it is four and a half minutes long. And it's the biggest waste of time since Orlando Jordan and Chris Benoit had a United States title match at SummerSlam 2005. Okay, that Hold being on. said. One second. That being said. Tony Schiavone, congratulations being to, inducted to the um, Hall of Fame, getting the Gordon Soley Award. Conrad got that shit last year. Now it's your turn. What is the uh, Gordon Soley Award? That's like for like media or something like that? Just like for like caster. From who? Or, From what organization, bro? That is like I've seen the, it. Conrad like, tweeted the shit. That's what? basically like the big like national wrestling. The Cauliflower thing. Club? Some, yeah. Yeah, something like that. He, uh, let me see. I mean, Tony Schiavone's great. I mean, like, if you don't like Tony Schiavone, well, you know, I got a couple words for you, pal, and they're choice words, like they're USDA choice. Go right? fuck yourself. Thank you, Christian. <laughs> Where did it go fuck yourself? Where were we doing that the other day? For that was last, that was last week. <laughs> was it? Yeah, yes. It was last week. <sighs> Where am I? My house? I don't know. I just know it's the Gordon Soli Award. That's all I know. All right. So uh, he deserves it. Yes. I've been doing the damn thing. You know, he deserves it. Especially after Hold watching up. this 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 skit. You know, it's <laughs> Tony Schumann came off with a total creep and it was great. It was delightful. You know, um, but it was just it was really long to open the show. No wonder the main event got cut short. Perhaps. It didn't need to be any longer. Yeah, it was. Do I really need a refill? No. Questions for another day. You're home, right? Alrighty. What time do you go to work? <laughs> I'll be at work at 7.30. Oh, I got you beat, pal. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up All on right, WCW. So we see Eric Bischoff backstage dressed as a sheriff. Live from New Orleans. Lake Front Arena. I think he was dressed as... As a confederate. As a confederate. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. He looked like a dummy. Yeah. He looked like one of them popos. And then we see Jesse Ventura dressed as the Bourbon Street gynecologist. <laughs> I'd love to be that. <laughs> AC Tony dressed as well, Jesse, Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura. Jesse the Body Ventura. You know you want to back up uh, a moment or two, and there's that. There you go. There's Eric Bischoff, Lord, that the Bish, dressed as uh, uh, Jesse uh, James, as Colonel Custard in the Clue game. Yep. You know, so there he is with uh, Terry Taylor, who's going to referee the. International championship match later on that evening. He and try to put himself over. You <laughs> suck, Terry. And we'll go back to uh, you know Tony Schiav Tony Schiavone dressed as Jesse the Body and uh, Jesse the Body uh, with uh, just uh, no a mask on. <laughs> All right, let's get into the first match. It was a six man tag match. Yeah, Harlem Heat, which is Kane and Cole, and the Equalizer going against the Shockmaster Ice Train and Choo -choo. Charlie Norris. <laughs> what? Oh. Well, first and foremost, God damn! Look at Steve Ray's gap. <laughs> Never mind that. Who's that handsome man known as the Equalizer? Maybe that's the dude I seen next to the Nasty Boys. I don't know. Don't, could nah. be. No, was it him? I don't think it was the Equalizer. It could have been. You never know. Sure, that isn't Scrap Iron Iron Adam Pierce. All right, it's definitely not. I don't know. Well, let me let me tell you something, brother, about this matchup here a little bit. First of all, it is very 
jarring, if you will, to, to wa- be watching a WCW show from 1993. And all of a sudden, Booker T's music comes on. And immediately, you're brought back to another decade. Because he's used that music for so long, it almost sounds futuristic at this point. It does. It's, it's just, it's so bizarre. And, you know, in that six-man, six-person, because we are bringing it to the future. The six-man. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys. Well, no. It's we bring the, it to the future. It's got to be six person. It's the It Doesn't Matter podcast return of everyone's favorite not a Native American, Charlie Norris. <laughs> and, you know, this matchup was what it was. And I want to give a special shout out to the referee because the finish of the match, you know, the referee focused on the competitors in the ring and counted the pinfall and ignored all the other bullshit that was happening outside of the legal contenders. They were in the ring messing around. And remember, this is WCW. It's an 18 by 18 ring, not a 20 by 20 ring. And they're all in there, but the referee was like, I'm only going to look at the legal competitors. Yep. And he counted the pinfall among all that schmoz. And there you go. The match was over, you know? Yo, the shock master hit Booker T with a bear hug. Then he just like, I can't even say a splash. He just like dropped his knees. And yeah, it was like a bear that hug. That was it. it was oh, a bear God, hug slam. Like and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then was it? Was it, was Kane? it Kane was looking at him. Like, Kane, I gotta say Kane. Kane. <laughs> yeah, we not, gotta say Kane. Not Kane from Bad Blood '97. We got Kane Booker T Huffman. Booker T. No, that was uh, Stevie Ray. Just looking at him like, uh, should I interrupt this pin? No, let me just go oh. attack this. I'm like, what are you doing? Man? All right. What the hell are you doing? This match was trash. But John Stratfax, question for you. What the hell was Shockmaster's gimmick? I'm still trying okay. To that so out. Shockmaster debuted. Famously, and he tripped over the wall. Yep. Infamously. Yep. Infamously, tripped over the wall. And so he lost all specter of being a legitimate tough guy competitor, even wearing a freaking sparkle stormtrooper mask. Yep. Right? So they decided to capitalize on it by making him just a general oaf. You know, he's always bumbling and stumbling, but when he's in the ring, he's a serious competitor of the highest magnitude. But outside of the ring, he was just a bumbling idiot. That so, was Shockmaster's Uncle new Fred. Game. So basically, Shockmaster was the old school Festus. Yes. <laughs> Bing! <laughs> without, without the bell. And without the ring. <laughs> yeah, oh, thank God. You know, but I got to say, also with this tag team matchup, this is two pay-per-views in a row on the It Doesn't Matter podcast where Booker T or Kane... Kane. Was taking the pinfall loss. Was he Kane or Cole? Yeah, he was Kane. I think he was. I think Booker T was Cole, and I think Cole, Stevie Kane. Ray was Kane. But I don't know that. It doesn't matter. Boom. <laughs> All right, our next match we have Mister Wonderful Paul Orndorff with the Assassin versus Ricky Steamboat <laughs> the Dragon. Why the fuck you announce him like that for? Ricky Steamboat the, the Dragon. Dragon. That was terrible. First of all, who's the assassin? First of all, why is his mask so damn tight? I mean, <laughs> these old the school wrestlers, head? man. Now, now, can we think back for a second, just very briefly, right? Well, we're gonna, we're gonna jump a little bit ahead, but you know, we just watched WWE Bad Blood 1997 last week's show, episode 35 of the It Doesn't Matter podcast. Watch and, it, and they did a segment featuring, you know, a uh, uh, legendary. Hall of Fame style wrestlers, Lou yes. Fez and Harley Race, Terry Funk, and like Dory, no Dory Terry. So I'm watching. We're watching this WCW 1993, and there, there's freaking Harley Race, and there's these other, you know, the Assassin. It's Four like, later. what the hell, you know? But uh, Paul Orndorff, or as Hulk Hogan would call him, Mister Orndorff. Brother, that sounds better. That does sound good. Paul Orndorff is perpetually upset all the damn time. He looked miserable all the damn time, probably because he knew that he was going to have a decent match with decent action with a crummy finish with Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Orndorff, yeah, he had (laughs) so good. He had a great physique, y'all, but he looked old as shit. Old as shit, yeah. man. Paul Orndorff looks like the most racist guy in a gas station, you know? Remember him at WrestleMania 30 with that thick-ass mustache he had? Oh, yeah. Looking like Charlie Norris's tights. <laughs> all over the place. But anyways, I like how Ricky Steamboat was on the ramp. 
trying to catch his breath. <laughs> then he finally jumped over the top rope and on off. <laughs> Sidestep and Ricky just missed. That yep. shit was funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Hit him with a Samoa Joe before Samoa Joe Listen, figured it out. Oh, man, here's one funny. thing Ricky Simo did in a match where it's like, if I was a wrestler and I would copy stuff as a baby face, I would copy from Ricky Simo. Yes. So I was thinking that. The Ricky, whole time. Ricky, this didn't happen in this match. This happened in another Ricky Steamboat match, but still, it's Ricky Steamboat. And I didn't watch many Ricky Steamboat matches. But Ricky Steamboat, you know, he's getting, you know, beaten, and he's getting backed into a corner, right? And he's getting beaten, he's trying to cover up shots like that, right? And all he, Ricky Steamboat does, you know, he obviously getting, like, he's getting nicked here and there. He just pushes the guy away. That's it. He's just getting beat, beat, beat. He just pushes him away. He's like, ah, I need to recover for that. Push, pushes him away. I'm like, that's such a baby face thing. No one does that. Nope. No one does that. Nope. So much of freaking steel. Kind of like Tully Blanchard and the slingshot suplex. Yes, I, love I was that like, movie. someone has to steal that. And you know what? They had. They did. I'm like, good. Good for you. You know, steal that move. Steal Ricky the Steamboat. Just ah, 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 push him away and like still trying to recover. Don't be. Don't try to be such a tough guy. You know? Yeah. You don't want to be a tough guy now. Yeah. You, everybody wants to be Steve Austin so bad. There's only one Steve Austin. Everybody want to do a destroyer now. Yeah, God. <laughs> and a super. I don't even want to talk about that. Oh, please. That's please. A, that's a whole another topic that we'll, we'll just go. We'll blow our brains off for that. So I'm trying to figure out how the mass assassin put something in his mask and headbutt <laughs> Ricky from the back, <laughs> <laughs> and he got the that's win not, that by a counter. Oh, mm-hmm. so dumb. Your mask is tight as fuck. Like how the fuck you bag of coke? Like, what the fuck you putting your 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 mask to knock this dude out? It was a bag of coke. I think it was a candy bar, the one hundred, one thousand grand. Hundred grand. Hundred grand. <laughs> oh, maybe man. maybe it was a payday because that shit is hard as a rock. Mm. If you smell what the payday is, fucking, <laughs> you know, nothing more than a Kit All right, our next match we had the Battle of Britain. It was the big fight field. We had Michael Buffer out here. We had Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog, go against Lord Stephen Regal with. What's his name? Uh, uh, William. Will- William. Sir William. William. Sir William. Yeah, Bill Dundee. And I enjoyed it. Was that I, Bill Dundee? Yeah, it was Bill Dundee, oh, right? Oh, shit. I don't think it was, but no. I don't know who that guy was. That might have been somebody else. Wasn't Lord Alfred Hayes? No. <laughs> no. I think it was Bill. Lord Alfred Hayes. Bill Dundee? Bill I don't Dundee. know, but maybe. Sure. Come on, Strap. You, you slacking. I, I, I'm not familiar with Bill Dundee. However, I did hear him in the news recently that he's suffering from some kind of sort of dementia, so... Oh. Sorry, Bill Dundee, but you were a big part of Memphis Wrestling and uh, uh, the documentary, a famous documentary called Memphis Heat. Uh, so find that out. Might be in the High Spots Wrestling Network. Um, I love the High Spots Wrestling Network. I enjoyed all the content they had. I would, I would subscribe for one month, watch every single thing I wanted to watch, then unsub- unsubscribe, and I'll catch Come you Come back and find what you find what you want. Smarts. Who the hell are we talking about yep, right now? Bill Dundee was Sir William. Oh, uh, we were talking about, you know, the British Bulldog. Yes. So I enjoyed the match. It was a There he is, baby. It was a great match. A lot of back and forth. They went the distance. Regal retains the title. Because you being a TV champ, the TV title only goes for the TV time. And this time was, what, 15 minutes, I want to say? Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah, so. But was it really 15 minutes? Yeah. The world will never know. <laughs> I don't know. But Bulldog had a chance. He hit him with the power slam. And yeah, and he kicked out. Yeah. Yeah, he kicked out. <laughs> and he just waited. Oh, you should have did it again. But... Oh, he just didn't do it. Typical Bulldog. And you then he, he hit him with like just a regular like standing suplex, and then that would have made, got him the three count. Like, huh? What? what yeah, he mean? worried about him kicking out. That was the problem. Uh, this match was the most British match in all of professional wrestling. And you know what? We kind of missed it a little bit. The British Bulldog did not, did not do his classic pre-match terrible promo versus Lord Segan Regal for the TV title. And... You know, it's kind of a disappointment in a way. Not just not doing the promo, but the match itself. It just it wasn't hitting the right spots. Nah. Kind of like I'm trying to hit this and fly. Yeah, it was it was dragging out a little bit. And I'll, towards the end, that's when you really got that, that bulldog I, spot. I think I enjoyed it because of Regal. Like, I just like seeing oh. Regal work. You know, as a matter so. of fact, you know, you're right, Dom, in the fact that, I mean, this was typical of WCW pay-per-views for a generation where there was really good 
wrestling and good work in the undercard matches. Maybe but the booking. The <laughs> ending. That was the problem. They never had that dusty finish. That, yo, the booking no. was BS, but the actual wrestling was really good. If they had a Finnish guy like Pat Patterson, WCW. Oh, oh, Lord. Well, but Pat, especially. You you talk about taking that, that company to another level. Pat was that guy. Pat knew exactly where to put the guys that didn't know where to belong, where they needed to be. Just look at Warrior and freaking Hogan. <laughs> those two, those three guys. <laughs> oh, they needed him in Halloween Havoc '98. Yeah. Oof, they needed more than that. Shoot. They needed a hope and a prayer. Bon I mean, Jovi. look at Brett. Brett Brett's whole run was basically freaking yeah, Pat Patterson. Got Pat Patterson. It. Yeah. When you got a guy like Pat backing you up, there's no way you can fail Man, unless that's on you. You want to be backed up by Pat. Yeah, you know, you know, it doesn't matter. Podcast, we beat each other to the joke. Yes. <laughs> Hello. 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 You. <laughs> All right. So after this, we see Vader out there to spin the wheel, oh. make a deal. Oh, 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 oh. While he's spinning the wheel, he's out there barking and just posing, and posing. I, I think I know what he won. A bag of peanuts and a 10% off coupon at the Texas Roadhouse. I got that, too. Mm-hmm. And the kids eat free. <laughs> Man, how do I get another 10% off? Do they have any other prizes? Anyway, no. Think. We're getting too deep in the New London food stroll that happened recently. <laughs> exactly. All right, so Vader's out there. He's barking. He's posing. And Texas Deathmatch against Cactus Jack. Uh, Dom, do you want to explain the rules or do you want to wait till the match is... We'll wait till we'll the match. Yeah, we'll wait till it gets We'll wait till the damn match. Our next match that we have... We have the natural Dustin Rose going against call in the natural. Stunning Steve Austin theme. for the United States title. Stunning Steve. The and shirt out of, that I am wearing right now. Wow. Woo-wee. And I don't know if you guys noticed in the crowd, there's a sign that says, Stunning Steve is the wrestler in the 90s. Yes. That guy was in line. Yo, you, you couldn't have. That yeah, I saw that lying. too. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Talk about foreshadowing. I bet that guy won the Powerball because he knew the future so well. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, but, man. yo, I enjoyed the match. It was great back and forth action. Austin had the upper hand. He hit Dustin with the stun gun. The ref counts to three, but Austin doesn't Which get the Austin win. Which Austin should have won. Rose gets up. Rose, Austin, one, two, three. Dustin, your winner. Austin grabs the belt. Bam! Yep. Nails Dustin in the head, and Austin leaves with the belt. Basically, like, starting... Well, I don't know what happens next, but... Kind of like basically. Switchblades. You didn't watch the, the match? Title. No, I'm talking about, like, later after, like... Oh, well, you gotta watch Battle Bowls. You might have to watch Battle Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. So this match, you know, features two future superstars of the 90s. Yes. The, inter- the former Intercontinental Champion, Gold Dust, and... <laughs> Someone get Abel a straw. And Stone Cold, Stone Cone, Steve Austin. All right, so. Two Texans. This match is occurring, and you know what? It is wrestlers before their time of being super famous, right? It's Stunning Steve and the Natural Dustin Rhodes, who has an incredible, incredibly terrible theme song. I like, like that song. I do. Good. I'm not going to lie. I like Karaoke that song. Karaoke one night. Oh. They call you know, him the Natural. Know, all, these, all these songs reminds me of WCW had an album, a CD, and an, a CD, a CD and a cassette. <laughs> All, All right. right. Which number? You, you number five. That, Click. We got a question from Randy. Randall. You're talking about theme songs. <laughs> no, Worst no, wrestling no, theme song. No. Was, There's so many damn songs. 40 no. minutes ago. <laughs> it's up there. You want to talk about theme song? What's the worst wrestling theme song? I, I can't even think of one right now. It's Mr. Wonderful Paul and Wonderful. That was the, that, what? Wonderful. The fuck? That was his theme song? No, eventually. It wasn't on this show, but it was his theme eventually. How about a bunch of The Rocks' Rocks remixes? You know, remember he had a remix of one of his songs? Uh, the original... That he had for like two weeks. Then he killed it. It was like a techno remix. Oh, you know? God, No. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? (laughs) 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 You know. What 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 about, I'm a bad man. Bad man. That a good uh, bass? The bass was good. Yeah. I'm a bad man. Bad Bad man. How about Mr. Ass's theme? I like that. You like that one? I am an ass man. I'm an ass man. I didn't like it when it came out. It sounded 
old. Kind of like the Big Show's theme, 1999. Well, well, it's the Big no, Show. That was don't, don't, Michael don't, don't. P. S. Hayes hitting that note like that. Ooh. Michael Hayes sang the Big Show's theme. Well. Oh, well, it's the big show. Sounds like John Goodman don't, don't, don't. from Rose. Don't, don't, Sounds don't, like don't. John Lee. This is the big bad show tonight. Dun, 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 dun. Very lumbering. Song. Got that diesel theme oh, to it. <laughs> you know, I never thought. Oh no, I got, I got a terrible song. Um, choo choo. No, <laughs> he's a man. <laughs> he's a man. Yo, that's great. Yo, William Regal. <laughs> Oh my god, that was terrible. Toot toot. That was terrible. I can't believe we all thought about that. <laughs> that was terrible. That says a lot. Ooh. Ooh wee. All right. All right. Do <laughs> you have any thoughts on Austin in that match with Dustin? Nah, you will it's a different Austin. It's not that brawling. It's more that like that Ric Flair style where he's selling more. He's got that heelish tendencies. He's always had, but it's a different Austin, so it's like I'm looking at him a lot different than I would like a Stone Cold, where he's brawling and beating the fuck out of him. He was a uh, ring general. He was yeah, working he... all body parts of this match. He was a tactician, old stunning Steve was. and But, I mean, I just lost interest in the match. Uh, maybe I, I knew it instinctively that it'd have a screwy finish, and I hate yeah. screwy finishes. That's a, that's a problem with in the bedroom. Dude. <laughs> hey, uh, That's the problem with WCW. You just don't trust the finish, so you don't even want to keep continue. That's why they got fired. Well, that's why everybody got fired, and they are <laughs> all right. G double O double N double E gone. Ha <laughs> ha. Speaking of gone, Missy Hyatt cut her hair. Eesh. What are you doing? Well, did you give her a dollar? Maybe. Back in the ninety three. Sure. Hey, <laughs> Jesse Ventura was saying a lot of things that back in the day the internet did not know because it wasn't existent. But <laughs> yeah, Jesse was a horn dog. Woo! Tony Sch- Tony no, Schiavone was a little horn dog too. But... I think Jesse knew a few things that went oh, on yeah, in the locker inside, room. Yeah, all the inside stuff, of course. <laughs> That's why they paired her with the Nasty Boys. She because was a she nasty, nasty girl. <laughs> exactly. She, she's Jan Jackson. All right, so our next match, we had the Nasty Boys and Missy Hyatt going against Marcus Alexander Bagwell, Buff Bagwell, and Two Cold Scorpio with Teddy Long for the World Tag Team Championships. Hold on, player. Let's make this an existing <laughs> tag team match for the tag team titles of WC. W. I like how Teddy Long was bald and always wore a do rag. Man, take that <laughs> shit off. That's a don't rag. <laughs> <laughs> so this match here, right? So Buff Bagwell, I mean, excuse me, Marcus Bagwell, Alexander. teaming. No, no, with, Marcus. Was he, Alex- was he the whole Mar- thing? Yes. Marcus Alexander okay. Bagwell. Marcus Alexander Bagwell with two gold Scorpio. It. What? The it fuck? was just. Why? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the match happened because they showed a recap from WCW Saturday night how Scorpio won the, the tag titles. Yep. I told you I was going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, the match, it was not special, but Scorpio was way before his time. How come they didn't use Scorpio in a singles capacity? He's black. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Hate to say it. They there didn't push any black He could have been a good t- uh, TV title. It doesn't matter. He wasn't ECW. Well, I think he was a TV champion ECW. Maybe. I'm talking about WCW. All right. I know Ron had the shine, but... The- I mean, Tugo Scorpio had a track on the WCW CD cassette. Um, I don't know, but he I was talented, know. very talented. Yeah, he was, he, he was basically Rob Van Dam before Rob Van Dam. You know, you want to combine tag teams of the worst caliber... Bushwhackers and the Nasty Boys. It's like, I'm watching the Nasty Boys. I'm like, they were a big act in yeah. their time. It's kind of like, why? That was, another, that was another thing I was thinking about because they was on SummerSlam 92. What the <laughs> hell happened? Like, how'd you end up in WCW a year later? I'm just curious. I, I'm I, got, I really got to do my research because I yeah. am so curious. All these people who was in SummerSlam 92 ending up in WCW. Yeah, IDM Pod, we will be talking about a bunch of wrestlers that left. After the 92 SummerSlam, because the list is very long. 
I mean, we talked about... I mean, sorry, it's going back a little bit. Uh, uh, maybe I put that graphic up already. Paul Orndorff and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat earlier. Anyway. <laughs> hey -o. How you doing, baby? Anyways, it was a good action. And then uh, Teddy Long and Missy gets it. Get into it on the ring apron. Ooh, King Sags King. hit Scorpio with the boot. One, two, three. Nasty Boys, the new tag team champions. <clears throat> it was just there, and uh, it, I mean, it was a good reflection of yeah. a moment in time. But I remember in WCW magazine, you know, this is when Bagwell was in the NWO, and he was. It could have been a kayfabe article, you know, they all were right. But he was like talking shit about his old partners, like all oh, that. That no, that no good patriot, that two bit, two cold Scorpio, that no name, uh, Scotty Riggs. He's talking shit about all of his old tag team partners. Damn. I'm like, at that time, I never watched WCW, so I was like, I don't know what you're just talking about. Watching it back now, I'm like, there he is, there is Wonder Bread Marcus Alexander Bagwell, <laughs> dance two cold Scorpio is like you know dancing and whatever, and Marcus Bagwell's just like. He's doing the he's doing, doing the Danny, Danny Garcia. Garcia. Yes, <laughs> yes, yep, yep. yeah. You know, yeah, wasn't so. he a gigolo before this? Yes, oh, maybe. Man. What a lucky guy! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So after this match, Sid Psycho Sid Vicious, he's interviewed by Eric Bischoff oh, yeah. with Colonel Rob Parker, the master. No, and the ruler. He's not the master. He's not the ruler. Of he the wants world. To, he wants to know who is the franchise. Yeah, w first of all, when I heard that, who is the franchise of the? F I was like, what the fuck are we watching? So you like you like Sting? I like you like Sting. Sting. You like Sting. You like and you like Sid. So Yo, for some reason, is. why why is it Sting and Sid? They always seem to just. Show up on our pay per views. That Road we Wild, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, I was thinking that. I'm like, yo, what the? This is ninety three, and they're still going at it in ninety nine. Halloween Havoc, nineteen ninety. You know what's crazy? Still look the same from ninety three to ninety nine. All right. So watching this promo, do you sits. still think he's not a Hall of Famer? <laughs> watching this promo, no, no. <laughs> okay, because like you're watching this promo and you're like, okay, watching the match though. Sid was one of those guys. He just happened to click yes. in the nineties. All right. It does not play. Today, you know, it just it's like what yeah. the hell's going he, on? When I was watching him, I'm thinking he fits that late '80s, early '90s bad guy <laughs> villain from like an Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, Sly Stallone action movie where you're like, right, this yeah. dude is just evil and just, ugh, just you want to just punch him in the face. Sid, you know, you don't know what Sid you're no. gonna get, no. especially when it comes to a promo. Stay. I'm gonna grab you by your neck. I'm gonna show you why I am the franchise. <laughs> that's what you wanna get from that's Sid. That's literally that's literally <laughs> from Sid. Goldberg. Sid. Okay, I don't know about you guys. But Goldberg's not there, but Goldberg. <laughs> For me. Uh... <laughs> Sid's promo cut off midway. Yo, what the? F what happened? And then it came on. Came back on without any explanation, and all I could think of was that God must be looking out for us. Thank God. He was like, this Look at the graphic wrong. John got on the screen right now of Sid. Why, right Colonel Robert? Colonel Parker! Why? Why? That's my foot! <laughs> That's my foot! I'm so dumb. I'm so dumb. Talking about WCW dummies. All right, Talk so dummy CW. All right, so, oh, so Stan comes out with the green uh, denim jacket Ow! with the sequences. Surfer Sting. I used to love Sting like this, the blonde hair. Not that pink. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's the Halloween pink. That's, that's dope, though. But, yeah, Sting started off the match. He was ah, hot. I might T do Sting. Take Close. him in the crowd. He's beating that ass. Sting recovered. He choke slam Sting, throw him around. And then Colonel Parker choking Sting in the corner with his sweat rag. Numerous <laughs> times. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. In the match, Sid hit Sting with the softest chair shot on the back of oh, all time. Thank you, because I <laughs> I saw that. I'm I'm sticking of. I'm like, oh my god, Sid. The, the two the two worst ones were had to be Hogan yeah. back in was it ninety seven ninety eight. Yep, yep. And then freaking uh, Gerald Briscoe. He didn't want to hurt Stone Cold. He just. <laughs> How the hell that got refilled? All right. and But Sting, he heats up again. Colonel Parker's tries to interfere and accidentally grabs Sid's leg. Sid catches him. Sting takes advantage, 
with the roll up match over. <laughs> Sting is your franchise of WCW. Oh. Can you imagine Sid being the franchise of your company? Hell no. Because oh come some come summertime, I'm out of here. See now, Softball. you miss, <laughs> you know, kind of like you know, we fill in each, we fill in each other's blanks, if you will. That's my notes. That's his notes. Then we got Johnny Boy's notes, and his notes say, "Hey man, holy shit, did you see that crazy ass fan of Sting's in the front row sex, during his ring sex, entrance? Sex, As a matter sex. of fact, if you didn't." I might have a little image for you. There he is. <laughs> Ow! Look at this psycho. You're talking about Sid? This is, you know, some of these, these pictures might not line up with whatever we're saying. This is the actual guy that I'm talking about. Yeah. This crazy ass fan. Look at the fame of his neck. Yo, he God, is damn, a that motherfucker is stinger. Hype. He is a stinger fan. Oh my God. This match was to see who the franchise of WCW was supposed <laughs> to be. And Colonel Robert Parker held the wrong leg down. And it was a comically bad spot. But you know what? Comically bad spot describes the entirety of Sid Vicious's. Career. Hey, ain't that Brad Williams next to him? Hey. Possibly. Oh, I anyway, same here. Look dude. at this guy. And I'm glad it's a gift because it's keep playing nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. Ow! Look at the vein that man is neck, man. He is Oh, pissed. my God. He, hyped. he must be taking that Ico Pro. Uh oh. That Walmart version. Yeesh. Sam's Choice Ico Pro. More like had Ico the Dough. He had the Kmart one. You got the hair do his thing for Halloween. Oh, the only reason I have face paint is because I did Sting, Joker Sting for Halloween many years ago. Ooh. All right, you do Surface Sting next. Why don't we all do Sting? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. Oh, all right. right. Then. I know where this is going. <clears throat> Our ass. next match is for the WCW <laughs> International Championship, which they finally recognized, which ended up being the big gold belt. The world, the heavyweight real world heavyweight championship, is between Ravishing Rick Rude, your champion, and going against the Nature Boy Ric Flair with Fifi. Right now, I want everybody listening, all you fat, ugly, overweight <laughs> listeners, to listen to a man with a body like. Yes. All right, well, show's over. No. <laughs> <laughs> the sensors have now woke up, and they're just hitting us now. Oh, man. All right, so Flair comes out with the beautiful purple robe. Rick Rue comes out with the Halloween trunks with Flair on one leg with the uh, black eye and Fifi on the other leg. Rick Rue looked Phenomenal, ravishing. like always. Ravishing. Like, how, his music was ravishing. I, love, I like that song. I love it. Yeah, yo, look at this man had no body fat. Practically. The arms. But he's but so he skinny. had mini, minuscule calves. Yo. It's all about the calves, man. Yes, baby. And I'm Calvzilla. Ah! That's Wait. why he didn't wear trunks. He had little legs. Yeah. That's it. But anyways. <laughs> early in the match, Ric Flair has uh, Rick Rude in a figure four early. And the yes. fans are chanting, whoop, there it is. Oh, all so whoop, long. there it is. is. I'm like, huh? No woo back then? Not in 93? No. Whoop, there it is. I'm like, yo, Scorpio already left. He gave Mabel a career. <laughs> Jesus. But this time, in 1993, I don't like Ric Flair as a baby face, man. Yeah. Like, he finally won the top rope. He connected the move, and this shit was ugly as fuck. I don't know if it was a clothesline or a chop. It was terrible. I know. I was with you on that. That shit was terrible, man. But it was a great, it was a great match for those two, but... The mat, the ending was just like, <clears throat> oi. It was oi. Pee Wee Anderson got knocked down, and Terry Taylor um, comes in. He get knocked down as well. Rick Rude Wait, gets so hit with a foreign object. My thing is, I have a question. When you're a wrestler and you become a special guest referee, all of a sudden you get hit once and then you just I drop said like that a, previous time. Man. Like what the fuck? You, you an official? You take one punch. Mm, you lay it out. Like, dude, you were wrestling like maybe a week or two ago, and all of a sudden you take one punch and you're down? Come on, bro. Exactly. The make it make drunk. sense. All right, so Rue hits with the foreign object. He goes for the pin, but Pee Wee Anderson stops Terry Taylor from the counts, and Ric Flair gets DQ'd. 
But Flair takes the title and Rude takes the girl. And Flair, he gets the big gold and bing! Right behind Rick Rude's head. And uh, he clocks him, puts him in the figure four one more time. Rude walks away with the belt, and Flair just That was off. it. That was your finish. That's your poor WCW finish for your title. You don't do that. That's why you don't have returning fans. <laughs> I mean, I got to say, the, the series of matches, which is just these two from Fall Brawl and this Halloween Havoc show that we're doing today, yep. the series of matches between Rick Rude and Rick Flair, for me, have been some of the worst Rick Flair matches I've ever seen. Yeah. I mean... To Abel's point, the quality of certain things in the match, they're obviously two yes. uber professionals or lift yep. professionals, depending yes. on your preference. But, you know, Ric Flair probably knew not to put his full effort into matches like these with bad endings. It just it wasn't clicking for me. Nah. Just like Dom said, you know, Ric Flair can be a good face. It just wasn't working because this just seemed like heel versus heel yeah. with one playing a lesser heel and that being Seriously. Ric Flair. Yep. And Rick Rude being the bigger heel. You know? Seriously. And, yeah. Why didn't they do this for spin the wheel and make the deal? I was thinking that. I was yeah. thinking that. They should have did that. It wasn't working. It just wasn't working. It wasn't working. All right. Main event time. Spin the wheel, make the deal. Texas death match. Please explain the rules for me, Dom. <laughs> shit. All right. So, for this Texas death match. Oh, shit. I lost my, my page. I had. Easy for him to look up. Oh, oh boy. On. Press that back button. We got a little uh, graphic him, here with make the main work. event. Hold on, Chris Jericho. Hello. Hold on, hold on. Don't want to see that one. This match. I don't know. I ain't got my my damn iPad. Tell him, Abel. Damn it! I didn't put it down. So, Anyways, pinfalls <laughs> don't, don't matter. Don't, don't matter. matter. Like this podcast, it doesn't matter. Submission, it doesn't <laughs> matter. But you know, you would get knocked down for a count of. Ten. No, no. So pinfalls no, don't count. You get, but you, you can pin. You get pinned anywhere. You get a thirty-second rest hold or rest <laughs> break to get up, and then after your rest break, you have to the count of ten to get up. If you can't get up after that ten, match is over. If you're confused, so are we. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> this, are you the t- rules of this match are so convoluted that you know we're having trouble now, explaining i remember it. all right so number one right. was no dq let's say it one more yeah. time no DQ, number one brother. no dq no brother number two falls don't count falls <laughs> don't count <laughs> number three falls count anywhere in the building falls don't count falls count anywhere in the building <laughs> yes already <laughs> number already. four you get a 30 minute rest break. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit, when the match is going, still in 30. 30 minutes. second, 30 second rest, rest break minutes. after every fall. It's the like fall doesn't count, right? This match. The, f- call, the fall does not count. No, because you got to get up after 10. Or if you don't get up after 10, then. And then yeah. none, the fifth one, after the rest period, you have 10 seconds to get up and or the match is over. What the fuck are you thinking, WCW? Simple. Last man standing. Boom. You can't get up to 10. Done. Finito. None of this bullshit about pinning somebody here and there. Get a rest pit. Shut it. They ain't know what to do. All right, let's get into this match. This ma- this was a fight. This wasn't a match right here. Yeah, it was a fucking Yo, ball. Jack came out swinging. He <laughs> took the chair. <laughs> Bang! He cracked fucking Vader over the head. And then later on the match, Vader gets Captain Jack in the corner. Bah, 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 bah. Yo, Jack is busted open all in I his know eye. Is Vader looked like he was doing some live rounds. Doing some and- live. You seen him backstage Ooh. throwing punches with Harley, Harley Race. I'm all still. That's how it was. I love Vader and respect him, but oof. He took his mask off within 30 seconds of the match beginning. Well, so Hell yeah, did, Harley did. Race put the mask in his pocket. That's Please. how you know how serious he was. Exactly. And then you see uh, they fighting on the ramp. No, Cat is on Vader's back. Vader just bow, just dropped on the on the ramp. Yo, Yo laid him out. Oh my! When I God. saw that, my back of my head hurt. After that, <laughs> Vader picks up a chair. Bow, oh. Barry Bonds his ass. Oh my God, man! Woo. Basically, finishing the match. Harley Race gets the stun gun. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't get up from that. All that shit that he did, he couldn't get up from that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Harley Race is going, and then when he hits Jack with it, nothing. Ha! Nothing. Bullshit. Fake ass pro wrestling. That's basically Vader wins. Oh, and Vader was your WCW World Heavyweight Champion, but he didn't come out with the belts. Yeah, because the belt wasn't on the line, so. It was on a band. Yeah. What What are you doing? I don't know. And after the match, Jack took out Harley Race while Vader walked him back. Double arm DDT. That was your finish of Halloween Havoc in 1993. WCW. No wonder why we enjoy the laughs. It's all good. You know? That's all we can enjoy. You know, Cactus and Vader, they, you know, they had a lot of good action and brutal moments, especially when Vader was in the crowd and Cactus wants to go for like a... Like a like a helo or yeah, a, what the fuck? A head over heels. Oh fuck that! <laughs> he just he lands on his ass like the bulldog would say <laughs> when the shockmaster fell. Oh. He landed on his arse, you know. And that was so freaking dumb. Vader didn't even bother to sell it, but the you know, like I said, it had good action. They put in great effort, of course, yes, brutal yeah. moments. But it ended way too quick, in my opinion. It looks like they had to get off pay per view, and it was a disappointment in that regard. So. It went the way I thought it was going to go. But did you guys enjoy the show? It was one of the better WCW it, it shows was interesting. that we've seen. It was interesting. That's all I can say. It was interesting. I enjoyed my time watching the show. That, it was yeah. Good, but, you know, it is what it is. But, all right, guys. But next week, we got another Mick Foley match. 1996, <laughs> Buried Alive <laughs> against The Undertaker I in your it. house. Nita, this is for you. Nita. Well, I want some pork chops next week before the show. But, guys, <laughs> I am the notorious one. I'm here with the drunken strap facts, John Lee. I'm here with the notorious one. Oh, shit. Fucked up again. God damn it. <laughs> oh, you think you know me. You think you know him. <laughs> oh, If you smile. La, we, just took, la, 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 we just took a final Terramon shot and we're going to try this shit one more time. Oh, hell no. I am the notorious one. Next week, we're going to talk about Buried Alive. Buried Alive, 1996. <laughs> Mankind versus The Undertaker. I am here with Mr. Strat Facts. Anita, you better be here. John's bringing the pork chops, if you know what I mean. we also here with Poppy Platino. Until then, we will see you soon. Boom. Boom.